So Bezrat Hashem, um, tomorrow night, the 26th of um, Tevis, is going to be the 10th yard site of my primary Rebbe, Shlomo Brevda Zatzal. And the whole reason that I'm learning Mishle and that I'm teaching Mishle is because of the Rav. I remember it was about 25 years ago. I, um, 25 years ago, I had a tape from Shlomo Brevda. And on the tape, he said that if you don't learn Mishle with the Gra, then you have zero chance of any success at all in dealing with the Eitzar. For a simple reason, is that you don't know what the Eitzar is. The godless of Sefer Mishle with the Gra is that he just doesn't just tell you what the Eitzar is, but he gives you the tools, and he like dissects it. You know, I remember when we were in high school biology, we were dissecting frogs, you know. Um, it's like, but how do you dissect the Eight Sahara? You know, you have to take it apart and like, he, um, the thing about the Eight Sahara is very interesting. Um, again, like going back to high school, I remember we had like these handheld football games, you know, and every time you like pass one level, so you get up to the next level, it's more complicated and more complicated and more complicated. And the Eight Sahara works like that. He doesn't take one second of a break always trying to um, take you out of this world and the next. And the brilliance of Mishle, and especially the way the Guru explains it, is that he really gives you the tools to, um, to fight the Eitzara. So I have tremendous cards to talk to my Rebbe, um, Roshalom Brevda, to introducing to me this to Sefer. And he should have Nachas and Shemayim that people are, um, are learning it. Somebody said once, you know, if you want to find the dustiest safe from the basement, which usually would be much way or the raw, because nobody bothers opening it. As one rub says, like, it's just too, you know, the punches are too hard, you know? And that's why I think anyone who comes to the shear is really to pat yourself on the back, because um, this is like, the Gra held that this is the Ikram Musa Sefer. Right? He, he wrote a letter to his uh, family before he went into a self-imposed gullus. He said, the Ikram Musa Sefer is, is, is Mishli. And, um, uh, he didn't write his commentary, obviously. That, but um, but that's it. Okay. So we're up to Pasik, the end of the um, 12th park. Pasik, <coughs> park your days. <coughs> Excuse me, Pasik Cafe, 1225. And it's famous Pasik. It says like this. Daiga um, Bulev Ish, Ish, Yisachena. A person or a man, really. Daiga Bulev Ish. Yisachena. You should be Yisachena. Right, we'll see what that means in a second. The person who has words in his heart, Yisachena. V'dovrchov Yismachena. So it's interesting, you have Yisachena, Yismachena, right, it's almost the same spelling. It's just that um, instead of um, Yisachena, Yismachena, we switch the um, Mem with a Nun. No, sorry, we add a Mem. Right. Yismachena is just you added the um, the mem, right? You added the mem instead of Yismachena. So what is that? Uh, what is the, what's the simple meaning of this pasuk? So the Gemara says two simple meanings of the pasuk, right? One meaning is Yismachena. It means you should talk about it, right? And we know there's something called uh, venting, right? If you have a problem and you talk about it, generally people feel better. That's one way to do it, right? Um, and that's one meaning. Yisachen is from Lashon of Siach, which means to talk about it. And the other explanation the Gemara gives is Hesachadas, that you um, take your mind off of it. You know, someone came up to me today and he was telling me about this whole business interaction he had and like somebody sued him and a company and this and, and showing me clause number 12 and clause number 17 and this. And I said like, this is complete Tvar Metalim, you know, you know, there's no problem here, Alpi you know. He happened to be that he's not married. I said, you should be thinking about getting married, you know. And he went through, Don Segel said, you should be thinking about getting married, you know. What does the Yetzirah do, does? The Yetzirah puts our minds, like, on things which it shouldn't be. And it, it, as the Gros says in Zion Yudalad, which is, like, one of the most important Gros here, no matter how many times we go over it, it wouldn't be enough. But in Zion Yudalad, the Gros lays down as he sowed, is the Yetzirah never gets us with Averis, right? The Pesach says, it's on page Sarich Es, Zivchei Shlomim Alai Yom Shalman Indorai, says the Groa, Ki ein ha Yetzirah Boil Adam, Liftoso Lasos Averis, Ki mi Yishmalo, Ach Bolo V'Mitzvahs, 
The Ali Neze Yim Shekhosa. So what does the Yitzhar do? It gives you all of these very, very important Shilas, which have absolutely no relevance to you. It gets your mind completely involved with them. And then you forget about what you're really supposed to do. Right? So this is how the Yitzhar works. Right? This is what the Gra is saying. And it's always a mitzvah. It's always like, this is something really important. I have to really put all my effort and concentration into it when really it's exactly what you shouldn't be thinking about. You know? I remember once I showed something to um, Rev um, Shlomo Brevda, which I thought was really, really important. And he said one point, point word. He said superfluous. <laughs> Meaning like, this is not important at all. You know? Okay, that was strong uh, language. He knew that I could take it. But... Um, Yisachena means really two things. Number one, try and talk about it, vent about it. And number two, Yisachena means Hesachadas, try to take your mind off of it, right? Um, and especially if it's the Yitzhar telling you to do a mitzvah, which is really now what you're supposed to be doing, Hesachadas is really the best way to go. And says the Marshal, it's a very interesting idea. He says really the same thing. So how do you take your mind off of it? The best way, no? Am I right? Is that what they say? Mm-hmm. That the best way to talk about it is to, the best way to take your mind off is to talk about it? No? So what's the best way then? About something else. What? Just something else. Think about something else. I don't know. The marshal, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that you're not right. I mean, it's probably, it's shivin no, part of the Torah. But, but, the marshal but, says, and get it out, and that helps you take your mind off. Right. This is what's called overventilation. Overventilation. By the way, the two minute a day Lashon Har book, it sold out already. I just met the editor tonight, and he said they're already sold out, and they might do it in Hebrew. Like, it's the best thing since. Uh, yeah, best thing since God cheese. Everyone should buy it, and it's amazing. Um, so, but, oh, so the Chavetz Chaim says you're allowed to vent, right? But it has to be one, right? Not to, not, not overventilation, right? Overventilation. Um, but that's, but that's what the Marshal says. And you should know, um, Rav Anissan Alpert. Anissan Alpert used to say that the last person to have Ruach HaKodesh was the Marshal. You know the story of the Marshal? You know the story of the Marshal? The Marshal's parents were very, very wealthy. They didn't have children. So somebody came to them and said, um, you can have children, but you're both going to die. You're both going to die. I'm Kachaya. And he was raised by his um, a nanny. I think his name, her name was Marshal. I was saying. Um, so that's Marshal. I was named after his nanny. Um, but he was incredible. Like in the past 300 years, one of the big Talmud Yechavim. So that's what he says. He says, when the Gemara says two explanations, how do you get problems off your chest? You have to vent about it, and then you take it off your mind, right? And, you know, the best way to vent, you read this book, he talks all about it. The best way to vent is not to use names. It's much better not to use names, you know? And if you have to use names, it should be to one person. It's very interesting. The way the Chavetz Chaim brings it... Do you have tissues, maybe? Sorry. The way the Chavetz Chaim brings it, you know, there's... We have here, we have... Oh, there's only one left. Okay. Um, the way it's very interesting because you know about Starbucks, right? You know about Starbucks? I gave out the cards. Starbucks? You know about Starbucks? No. Oh. <laughs> I don't mean the coffee. The acronym that like is very important to remember the seven rules, which he goes through over and over in this book. But I always say, if you don't have it on your fingertips, that's very hard. Lamaisa. There's seven rules you need to know that you shouldn't speak Lashon Hara. When you're allowed to say something with, for a beneficial purpose, and the acronym is Starbucks, right? S means you have to see it. T means you have to think about it. Is it really um, beneficial? And is it really... A means accurate. R means reprove the person before you say it, which is not needed for... And seeing and reproving are not needed for Achilles, um, which is to prevent a future harmful relationship. B means beneficial. You, mean, you means utilize other ways, if you can, other than Lashar. C means cause more damage than Basin would do. And KS is keep seven or keep silent. Right? So there you have it. That's Starbucks. And one of the most important ones is the B. Because B is beneficial. Right? B is beneficial. 
And the Chavetz Chaim says, it could be venting is beneficial. And it could be it's beneficial. He says, Esher. So there's a machlokas. Some say that means that you're allowed to do it. And sometimes you're not allowed to do it, you know. So the consensus of the postgame is that if it's really bothering you and you can't function, you know, then it would be it would be a reason to be lenient. But you should know it's not so simple. So it's, it's a machlokas amongst the how to learn the Chavetz Chaim. Um, but in any event, um, to at least vent, you know. And the truth is, sometimes you can vent to yourself, you know, or you can just write it down, and that really, really helps. Um, that really, really helps. What I find, and I said this, I just got back from Chutzar, as I said it many times, is the Groh, we went over so many times in Yud Aleph, Yud Tess, because the Groh there says that nobody ever does anything bad to you. Um, the Groh there says, um, here, Yud Aleph, Yud Tess, he says, Ki la nirdaf ein chilak, shahar beishluchim lamakam, what the Groh is saying here is, anybody who does anything bad to you ever, it was going to come to you anyway, right? Somebody caused you financial damage, someone caused you emotional pain, you know, someone, um, you know, insults you. It was going to happen anyway through someone else. It had absolutely nothing, the fact that it happened had absolutely nothing to do with them. He says, Harbish Lulamakam. So you don't really have to, you, you, you should try your best not to get upset at the person. And, you know, I said this in a shir to like 100 women on the radio, on, on the radio, on a, on a conference call we have once a month um, in America. And then when I was in Chicago, so I had a big keenness of 300 women, right? And they wanted to invite me to speak, but it was only women. So the woman said over the shir, she said about the grah, and I said, if... If all women would keep this halacha, because forget about the men, you know, it's no chance. But if women would keep this halacha, Mashiach would be here tomorrow. Not even tomorrow, today. You know? Like, this is really what's holding back the gula. You know? And like, I think everybody knows it. You know? Um, I was just by somebody tonight who for like one year, like, I couldn't bear to see their face. They upset me so much. And then like, one day it dawned on me, like, I just, it's all good. And I really misunderstood. And they were speaking very strong, you know, but that's the way they speak. You know, some people have different ways of expressing things, you know. Um, like Rabbi Dr. Avram Chorsky used to say, he would say, like, how would you feel like at being at the other end of such brilliant consolation? You know, like one guy, when I was in America, he told me, for me, giving money to a coal is like putting money in a black hole, you know. Like when I think of black hole, I think of like just empty space and like sucking in, you know. And then after he told me, oh, that's a business term. I didn't mean anything, you know, bad. But okay, look, I had to hear that, you know. Maybe I had to strengthen myself and Shiva Satara, whatever it is. But there's no reason to be upset with this person, you know. And this other person, we're best friends today, you know, because I realized it's like it had to come to me. I had to hear that. You know, I had to have this difficulty. You happen to be the one, okay. He talks very strong, you know, doesn't. It's hard. But I'm telling you, I promise, yeah, I'll sign on it. If all women, or like, if most women, or if 100,000 women would keep this claw, the Mashiach would be here tomorrow. You know? Because that's it. The Gemara says, Sinus Chidam is like holding it back. You know? And the main scene is, and the Svarim say, if someone does something to you, and you get upset, that's called Sinus Chidam. Because the only time you're ever allowed to be upset is when? Anybody know? Does anyone know? Are you allowed to be upset? What? A Russia. It's a mitzvah to be hate a Russia. Yeah. Now look, I'm speaking too strong because I myself can't do this. Right? But it's what we're supposed to strive for that. Yeah? And it's very hard for us today because we assume if somebody does something, you get upset. That's human nature, right? But the Gemara tells us that it's not supposed to be, the status quo is not supposed to be if someone gets upset with you. If someone says to do something, you get upset. You're supposed to say, it's so Hashem, you know, and thank you Hashem. Look, the Gemara says that every time you get insulted, you lose 100 of errors and you're quiet. 100 of errors, right? And you get the Koch of Bracha, right? The story with Chaim Kineski, you get the Koch of Bracha, you know, if someone... So, like, it's the most amazing thing. 
I met my Roshiva once on the plane, Rosh Kuzlevsky. And in the middle of our conversation, we were talking to the Shabbos. He says to me, these trips are so hard for me. And I said, is it because of the Bizonis? He goes, Bizonis are great! Bizonis are great! Like he was dancing and singing. Bizonis are great. The story about one of the Gedolim, like, he was like, he was looking to get Bizonis, you know, because somebody was very sick. And he said, I'll take the Bizonis and that'll give, and they got better. Somebody very sick got better. So like, you should not be upset with people. But look, like tomorrow someone's going to insult me, I'm going to get upset, you know, because I'm a human being. But hopefully, like instead of getting really upset, I'll just get a little upset. That's my hope. Um, or maybe I'll remember what I said and I'll say, oh, you get upset, that's like I'm a hypocrite. So, um, but the point is, is that if we get upset, you know, which we will, you know, until, you know, but we have to try our best, Yisachenu. Number one, to talk about it, and to do it. And the truth is, it doesn't have to be right away. You know, this morning I was at the Kosal, and like, I prepared yesterday for a shir I was supposed to give in the morning, and I look at my notes, and it's gone. It's just like not there. Like, everything I did the whole day was gone. Like, six hours of work. And I'm like, that's really annoying, you know. And I said, but look, it must be good. And it was amazing. The shir was like, it was about Marmite, you know, it was like totally not relevant. And I changed the whole topic, and I made something else. And it was like really successful and much better. Everything Hashem does is good, right? It's just, we have, we're, we're people, we have emotions. Somebody says something to us, you know, we get upset. So the, the, the Gemara, Chazal, the Marsha, they're telling us two things. Number one, get it off your chest, either by telling someone, preferably without the names, you know, write it down. Um, however, you know, you get Yisachena, and then try to forget about it. I remember this gra. I remember the Gemara. Like a hundred of eras, that's pretty good, you know. Um, you know, um, these orders are great. Just remember that. Okay, so now let's see what the girl has to say about this pasuk, because I'm sure he has some very important insights for us. When you base chaf hey twelve twenty five, he says like this: Kashira adam b'daiga, zua daiga mashpilas aleiv maod. So the girl tells us it's very painful. It's really hurtful. The lave, by the way, the lave is where the ruach is. We have three um, parts of our neshama, right? The nefesh is in the liver, the neshama is in the brain, and the regesh, the the, the, nef- the ruach is in the heart, right? So that's why it says the lave is mashra mode, because our emotions in our hearts. And when someone says, you know, um, that we're what we're insult insults us, then our lave is very heard from it. Ach mi shaboa umedabra lo dvarim tovim v'tan chumim yismachena hadvarim etzleib. If someone comes and tells you some pleasant words, that'll make you happy. You know? I'll tell you a really good story. Mary said it here before. When I put out my Sefer Yorabina, which is an encyclopedia on the concept of Kashras, and I worked so hard on this book, like, I wrote every page, like a hundred at least 40 times, and sometimes 100 times. I just wrote it over and over and over and over again because it's a cyclopedia for people learning Elvis Kashrash, which you need for smicha. And I wanted to be really clear. So I stayed up every night, uh, every Thursday night for two years and didn't sleep the whole night. Anyway, the book comes out, and I'm like putting in a certain base medrash, and a certain time a comes up, and he opens it, and he says, I really thought you could produce a quality safer. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, like why don't you just shoot me in the leg, you know, or the head, you know. Um, so I was like devastated. Anyway, this was on Rehov Zevin in Bayako. Um, so then, like, oh my gosh, you know, like, I feel like I just want to jump off the roof. So then I go across the street, Rav Nachman Bullman was there. And I walk to his house and I give him a copy of the Safer. He says, hold on a second. He goes in the back room and he pulls out a, um, an envelope like this. And it had a thousand shekels in it. He says, I want to pay you one million shekels for this copy of your book. But like, I'm giving you a down payment. I don't have that much cash in the house. I don't keep it around, right? So I'm giving you this as a down payment. And then he pointed out the window, if you know, close seven, like they have these Arab houses building down the valley. He said, you see all these Arabs over here? He said, if they knew what was going on here, they would just pick up and run away. You know, how do they hope to survive with people producing such quality to our works? You know, like, I, I felt like it was Tchiyas Amesim, you know? Anybody who knew Rav Nachman Bowman Zatzal, 
he was like the Lev Kol Am. He like had such a Jewish heart, you know. And the same thing about Reb Rebda, you know. I said in my, um, we all was there, on Moses Shabbos, we had him love Amalka. Oh, by the way, I, whoever doesn't know how Reb Rebda looks, I have the sign here, I think. Let's see. Oh, maybe I took it out. I took it out, actually. Um, yeah, I think I took it out one second. Oh, no, we have it here. Right. Oh, here it is. Right. It's a picture of Rishon Rav the Zetzal, you know. And I said about him, you know, I had a lot of Rabbeim, Rav Hashem, but there was one Rav who, like, rolled up his sleeves and said, I'm coming into your deepest pain. I'm going to be with you. Now, I shouldn't say one, because it was really uh, Rav Shavu Zahman also. When I went to him, I asked him for advice. Says, I don't know. And he held my hand. He started crying, you know. Or Rav Rav, like, month after month, like, he was just there, you know. And that's really what people need, you know, when you're suffering. That's really what we need. So that's Davar Tovis Machena, right? That's what the girl is saying. If we have daiga, it's, it really hurts us, yeah? But if someone comes and says a davar tov, right, then it's ismachena. And it's really, it's really something so critical today. We have no idea, you know? I tell this story often, I said it. I was, on, I was driving from Lakewood. I wasn't driving, I was being driven from Lakewood to Brooklyn. And a woman calls me up, she's on the roof, I'm about to commit suicide, you know? And what did I do? I just said, I really empathize with you. I feel so bad. You're suffering. You have such difficult problems, you know. And she didn't bring Hashem, you know. But look how many people out there feel that way where they're not talking to people, you know. We have to assume that, like, everybody is basically in that state, you know, and say good things to everybody. So we said two important things tonight, if we want Mashiach to come. And I know, like, you're, like, the, on the front line, Mashiach coming, and all the women here. But number one, don't get upset with people. And number two, radiate positivity. As many positive things that you could say to people, it's not enough. Say more, you know, because like people are dying for it today. They just, like it's, Reb Reb used to say, he said, no one says hello today because they're worried they might say hello on Tisha B'av. So all year long, you know, it's a chumrah they're taking upon themselves. Like what's going on? He says, you know, when I meet Reb Reb, and I, there was someone who came to our event, he said, Reb Revda was just Yedidus. And you know the word Yedidus comes from? Anybody know where it comes from? What? Yedidus means Yad Yad. You know, it's like, you're like this. So Reb Revda said, like, I would meet somebody I went to Yeshiva with 40 years ago. And we would like hug each other. We were best friends. He used to tell my wife, he said, today if people send you a cake for your simcha, like, be happy. You know? But like, there's not so much Yedidus anymore. And one of the reasons is, is because we've been hardened by the world, you know, and um, we've heard too much about this and this. Every single tragedy that happens in the world, we have to hear about it, you know. Um, and we just, we just lost our sensitivities, number one. And number two, the heart of previous generation was just much more open, you know. The Chavos Levava says that the heart is clogged up by impurity. You know, and there's just a lot of impurity today. So we have keep that on your mind. The more good things you say, it's not enough. If you said a hundred good things to people today, say two hundred the next day. You know, as much as you can. Just radiate positivity. Like, and you know, I'll tell you this: even even Gedolim need it. You know, I've been by Gedolim and they spoke, and people didn't react, and they said like they didn't like what I said. You know, they were like hurt. Yeah. Um, my husband works with the Shiloh from the Shiloh Yaku Fisher. That the situation I had with a pregnancy that they wanted to terminate, whatever. Right. And um, and he passed and can't do it. And you have to keep the pregnancy. But on to us. And um, we did a whole lot of things afterwards. Got to a different hospital and. Whatever it was, Baruch Hashem, I gave birth to a very healthy, empty, premature baby. My husband went back to um, to Rabbi Shmuel Yaakov, and he told him, "Mazel Tov, you know, because the top we have, you know, baby and it's good." And 
I said to my husband, I said, thank you so much for coming. People tell me, oh, there's a service. And never tell me when there's a good, a good service. That's very important, you know? Like every day people tell me to us. And I very rarely people tell me, you know, good thing. And just like, it's hard. And especially Rebevda, you know, Rebevda would, in his later years, he would say, I just can't daven for this. Because in order for me to daven, I have to put my entire neshama into it, you know? And I just don't have the call to do that anymore, you know? And like real gadolim, they really, really feel it, you know? And you, it's really, and sometimes, I know of Shema Galoi, you know, he's one of the Gedolim today, like he'll dive in and he'll, he'll just keep diving for you if you don't tell, you know, so it's really, really, um, it's really, really important. It's really important. And, but even Gedolim, they need to hear good, they need to hear good things, you know. Um, and everybody needs Chizik today. Everybody needs Chizik today. And that's what the Gora is saying. Excuse me one second. Okay. A good word, you know. So there's not enough good words, like I'm telling you, you know. And the truth is, it's not, it's something, I remember once I had uh, a friend of mine and he had a hard time with it. Like it wasn't his personality, you know. And many people, it's not their personality. And he just started practicing on me. He said, can I practice on you? You know, and it was like very forced. But with time, like it became very rugged until like it was his personality, you know. And it's not it's not an excuse, you know, Rameer Schuster. Um, he was like the shyest person in their Israeli Yeshiva. And he said, but there are all these people coming to the coast every day and we could bring them all to Yeshiva. So he just started going up to every single person and he changed himself, you know. And this is something that's critical for us today. This is really what Hashem, Hashem wants. Number one, not to get upset with people if we can. And number two, radiate positivity as many positive words as you can. And you, you know, you're going to get to Shemaim and you're going to see hundreds of thousands of people. And like, who are these people? These are the people you saved their life, you know. This story, I, I heard it from my Chavusa, heard it from the Balamaisa, right? Is that a guy gets a plane ticket to go to a wedding. He's like, what's this all about? He goes to the wedding in England. He didn't even remember like who the person was. He says, when I was in Yeshiva, I was about to drop everything. I was going to become completely not from. And you came up to me, you pat me on the shoulder. How are you doing? And I changed my mind. And I'm marrying off my first daughter today. You know, and I want to thank you for that. You get to Shemaim and you'll see hundreds of thousands of people. Either you saved their lives, or you saved them emotionally. So that's Davar Tovis Machena. It's very, very chashif. The Gra continues. Vaod. Davar Tov Yismachena. Ein Tov Ela Tera. Tov is really Tera. The ultimate Tov is Tera. Kikola no sin all of old Tera. Pork and Mimeno Hadaikas. Right? If a person really, okay, it's mainly for men. It's true. Old Tera is for men who have a mitzvah to me this all the time of Talmud Tera. Kamosh Kazvazer of Nasan. But it's also true for a woman. Torah is a metzias that makes you happy. Yeah? Um, <coughs> that makes you happy to study Torah. Call up Perik Mimena Old Torah, anyone who throws off the Old Torah, knows in all of the Yehuri, Cherev, Behuri, Znos, Behuri, Shtos. And all the bad things come to you, and your head gets clogged up with these things. Call up Nos in all of Old Torah, anyone who takes the Old Torah, Pork Mimena Yehuri, Cherev, so the Gros is saying two things here. Number one, what does it mean, Dabr Tovi? Daigav Levish, that's the same. In both Pshatim, right? A person has worries, he has concerns, you know, and a person should never think other people's worries are are too um, too small, you know, but ever bother somebody, you know. There was a certain person who, like, had a very interesting perception of the world, um, and they spoke to me many times. And like, I would try to like say, like, that doesn't make sense. And they realized that that's the reality. And that bothers them. So be in their world. And, you know, and they were able to make some progress with that. Right? So person has digas, that really is painful to them. So how do you get, how do you help people get out of their digas? So one way is to say good words to them. And the other way is Torah. You know, bring them as much as possible into Torah 
and um, help them to be connected to Torah. And we see that a person who takes upon themselves uh, Torah, that that takes off a lot of um, the problems that a person has. And that's really something um, amazing. That's really something amazing. Okay. Um, fine. How much time? We have another 10 minutes. Let's, um, let's continue a drop here. Because, uh, um, as I said, Rav Ravda, he was like the master of this, right? And it was the same thing, because he was the master of saying good things, but like he also knew how to like give it to me, you know? I told, I think I told you a story. I called him once up, Erev Rosh Hashanah, and I had just read in Rav Chatzik Levenstein, it says a one day old baby, one day old baby is judged. So I said like, how do you judge a one day old baby? What do you do wrong? So he says to me, you stupid American, that's what you're worried about. Everybody shot me, he said, work on your Shalom bias. <laughs> so, like, he really gave it to me, you know. I said, okay, you know. He could say that because he had, he was so overflowing with positive words. He knew, like, he wanted to tell me something, he wanted to make sure that it went in, you know, and it did. See, I still remember it today. Um, but the point is, is that Davar Tov is Machana, right? And that's really... That's really the key to um, this. And Rabbi David Cohen told me, the Gemara says, that what can a person do and be saved from Chavli Mashiach? And we have to know, all the Gedolim say that, right? We're in Chavli Mashiach now. Everything that's going on right now, the Maral says that you can't have a new world order without a destruction of the old world order. I just got back from America, like, what's going on in America? Like, this place is like crazy, you know? Like, excuse me for saying this in public, but it's like, like everybody is like agrees that it's complete insanity going on. Like, what happened to normalcy, you know? Um, but uh, it has to happen. It has to be a complete destruction of all moral ethics of all, you know, like this big chacham gets up and says, you know, a man is a man is a woman. Well, this today, the Rebbe in Kushleski just told me yesterday, she said, a from doctor was, you know, helped a lady get birth. She says, do you want it to be a boy or a girl? And she's like, what is, you know, no, I'm not allowed legally to answer this question, you know. Like, what's going on? Like, people just lost their minds. But this is what the Maral says. Before Mashiach comes, and, you know, probably some people are going to watch this and, like, get, send me nasty letters. But before, you know, because I'm not inclusive, right? My brother, you know, was running a certain tar institution. He lost $1 million from a certain... I won't mention which uh, Jewish federation it was, yeah? Because they're not inclusive, yeah? You have to accept every single Narshkite under the sun to be considered inclusive. Now you lose all your funding, you know, a million dollars. Okay, so it'll come from somewhere else. But the Maral says before, and why is that? Because it has to be clear there's only one Emmas, yeah? So the whole world order that we understand, you know, uh, this, um, uh, what was today was Martin Luther King Day, no, yesterday, right? You know, like there were once moral, just people like our founding fathers, you know, and, and, you know, there was like some element, at least a little bit of normalcy and ethics and morality. Today, it's just completely disappeared um, because that has to happen before Mashiach comes. Before Mashiach comes, it has to be a complete destruction of the whole world order in order for the new world order to come in, right? Okay, so let's try to do one more Pasuk over here. Very important Pasuk. Especially um, since we mentioned Reb Brevder, it says Yosem Rei Yitzadik B'Derech Shoyim Titoim. Yosem Rei Yitzadik Yiderech Yitzadikim L'Haster Mites Maseim L'Atzni Aleches. Right? A tzadik does not let you know how great they are. You know. And okay, yeah, I'm not allowed to say the story, but I'll say it anyway. Yeah. Right before Reb Brevder was nifter, we made a Yom Tefillah in the call. Reb Yeshua was also very sick, and I called him up that night. And he said, thank you for making a tefillah for me. It helped me very, very much. And you're not allowed to tell over this story. Okay, so I figured now that he left this world, I'm allowed to tell it, yeah? But he said that to a few people. There was one person who was saying, tell the whole Sefer, tell him every day. And he stopped for one day and he got a message that he should continue because it's helping him stay alive, you know? We're talking about somebody like who was very, very connected to the upper worlds. I told you this story, right? We had so many problems and I came to him. He says, come back tomorrow and I have the answer to all your problems. I come back the next day. He says, the answer to your problems feels, I'm going to write you a tefillah and it's going to get better. And it did. Yeah. And he spent 45 minutes with me 
was like pulling down the words, you know. He said, write this word. And then like was and like he was like connecting in Shamayim, like exactly which words should be pulled to Yeshua. He knew those things. You know, we say that in the in the Slichos. There were Anche Amana. Anche Amana were people who knew which words you could say to get the Yeshua. And he was one of those people, right? But he didn't like go around telling, you know, like, I wrote, you know, 700 tefillahs and, you know, saved 10,000 people. Those are my stats. You know, he didn't say that. He didn't talk about it at all. But you'll meet hundreds and hundreds of people who got these tefillahs. Because he was Sneolechus. Ach mi shorotze lio sadik v'leilich b'dark yashem. A person who really wants to go in dark yashem. Hu miragel mit sadik havero drachov l'leches bam. Yeah? He has to, like, learn from other tzaddikim. Right, how are you supposed to act? Vizami Loshan, excuse me, Vyasuras Eretz Kanan. Very interesting, the Gra is saying here. You almost you have to spy on Sadiqim. You know, spy on Sadiq. How do you do that? So today you can do it with the books, you know. They're not always hundred percent accurate. Some things are glazed over. But again, like they usually don't tell stories like that um, about you or me. Um, although um, if you read my uh, book, which Rabbi Seltz wrote, Encounters of Greatness. Um, everything that happened there is computo. I made on that, and I learned so much from the, from these great people. You know, um, you know. I remember once I was walking with her brother. We went to a grocery store, and he said, "Please don't give me a clear bag. Give me a black bag." And I said, "Why is that?" He said, "It's not covered to walk around when people could see all of your groceries." Like, I wouldn't have thought that, but like, you know, he heard that from his rebbe and rebbe. And what's called covered, you know, and what's called covered, and how do you talk to people? You know, I was once sitting in a shear, and there was a guy, there was like 10 people in a shear, it was a guy blowing bubbles right in front of his face, you know, chewing gum, and, and like, I thought, like, I wanted to like pass out, you know, like, this is such a bizarre in Litara. And her brother sees me, he says, like, he goes like this, you know, like, because this guy was, worked very hard, he was very tired. He said the only way that he could stay in the shear and not fall asleep was that. And I met him last two weeks ago. Yeah, Tuesday, right? Two weeks ago t- oh, today, I was speaking in Brooklyn. I met him. And he said, you remember me? Yeah, the guy blowing the bubbles, you know? And my brother said that you were supposed to do that. So, you know, what can I say? Um, but like, okay, you know, so that's something you learn from a tzaddik. You know, don't get insulted. People are blowing bubbles in your in your shir. Um, so you have to spy the tzaddik him out. And you have to see how they approach life. Because every single thing in life, there's a way to do it according to Torah. Like, every, there's nothing in life where there's not das Torah in that thing and not a correct way to approach it. Okay. Um, so that's spying for Sadiqim. V'derek Rishoyim Titoyim, Aval Rishoyim, Darkam Biskalia. Everything is in the open, right? Everything is revealed. V'zeo Mash is Galia, Zu Titoyim Ki. Right? Rishoyim is in the plural, right? Like, if you want to become a Russian, it's very easy. Like, it's all, you know, just read. Oh, uh, what? Oh, uh, yeah, or you read, you know, just the news of the newspapers, you know. There's an upcry in Israel because democracy is over, you know, because the, um, because, you know, the country is being run by fanatical Haredim and all the other parties, you know, okay, and there are certain... You know, what, they set up the Supreme Court that it's all lefties, you know? So, you know, what are they going to do? Every single law. They said there was only 27 laws. They, yeah, but there was like 2,000 that they, they sent back, you know? So the government is basically, you know, has their hands tied. And the whole, the country is in uproar. It's the end of democracy. Okay, you know, whatever. Okay, these things are, don't need to really be said. But the point is, is that it's really easy to become a Russia. Like, there's no shortage of um, information available, you know, to become a Russia. Um, but to become a tzaddik, right, you really have to, like, spy it out, right, spy it out. And, um, you know, it's really, that's uh, what it means, shimash tamadil chachamim. Shimash tamadil chachamim means learning about um, the, like, the fine points in life, how to deal, how to deal with people, and how to deal with, um, you know, all sorts of issues and have uh, how to connect what the Torah doesn't say, you know, to life. Yeah. In other words, 
to understand, to have the Torah so much part of you that every single aspect of life um, you can incorporate and do according to what the Torah says. And that's real, real Shemesh Tamin and Chamim. And I feel so, you know, when this, um, you know, a certain tragedy took place, I called over Brevda and he gave me like a one hour sheer about it, you know, and how you're supposed to feel and how you're supposed to view it and how you're supposed to deal with other people. And it was just like such a chinuch and things, which doesn't say, you don't, won't find this in Sfar, you know? And really like a person who didn't, you know, and, and Rav Orluik spoke once to Shabbos by our event. And he said, the one thing which I learned really from Rav Brevda is that you have to have a Rebbe, right? He was like very close to Rav Chatzka Levenstein, his prime Rebbe and the Chazanish and the Peskura, right? And like he wouldn't move without them, you know? And after this incident where he wrote this tefillah for me, it was so obvious to me. Like, you have somebody who has such a deep inside life. Like, how can I make major decisions, at least without checking in with them, right? So that's really, really something critical that we could take from Rebrevda, again, just to sum up his, um, his warmth and good, kind words, right? At the same time, not being hesitant to, like, let you have a piece of your mind, when it uh, was necessary. Um, and um, that's Devar Tovis Machena. And then just the general and Haggas, which are completely governed by the Torah, and looking at a tzaddik and spying out a tzaddik and watching and growing and learning from their actions. And we said, I'll just conclude with that. We said, if we would keep this Gra Yud Yud test, which are Brevda, like you would say, I remember he gave a shir, Kams Bar Kams and So what were they supposed to do? He said, I don't remember if it was Kamsabar. He said, I should have gone to his rav and asked a shayla. What do I do? I'm just thrown out of a wedding, you know? Like, what a pusha. He said, we should make a party, you know? We should make a suiz hodor. You know, the incredible, right? You know, so, um, you know, that's, 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 that's the Torah, you know? The ability to just forgive and forget, let it slide, and just be happy about it. You know, I remember Moshe Sternbach, they came to his house and they were throwing dirty diapers and rotten vegetables at his windows. And they took all his svarim, they put him in a paper shredder and they sent it FedEx and they made sure to call him and make sure they got it, you know, because, because what? Because he said a certain kula would save people hundreds of millions of shekels, which they didn't like, you know, obviously they're bigger than they come in him, you know? So the next day I'm by his house and he's smiling from ear to ear. I said like, why is Rav so happy? He said, I wish they would come every week. You know, I got all their mitzvahs and I got all my averas. And he was sincere about it. This is really like halavai. We we're like even like close to this, but at least we could try as much as possible not to get upset when people like, hopefully we won't have such radical things, you know, um, you know, um, but um, you have to be like really, really big to get such a, you know, he says, and he was like so sincere. Like, how levi do we come every single week and do this, you know? Like, I would be so clean of all my averas and I would get all the messages. Okay, but we can at least be like, you know, parva, you know? And that, number one, and number two, to say good things to people. And Bezrat Shem, um, tomorrow, you know, when this is going up, when tonight, tomorrow, hopefully by the end of the week, the bull will be here, you know? Um, and the, the Baal Shem Tov says, Shif Tuchom Hisham Tuchom, you know? Hei Mayach Nachamuni, he says, Shvat is... A difficult month and and shiftzikol mishandach and other you know gula seed and lavo right in Nissan and that means other also so there's no reason why the gula shouldn't come next month absolutely no reason but the only reason is because we're not doing it and everybody who heard the shear myself like foremost like we should just do it just don't get upset when people right either call a rob or rebson or or vent to somebody or something just try not to get upset and overflow with positivity. And Mzrat Shem Bakar of Mamish will be Makabal Pene Mashiach. I mean, you can't do it, so.